Hello everyone and uh, thank you for the invitation to this intro session. Uh, so um, thank you for the introduction, introduction too. So yes, uh, my name is Irene Balelli and I'm uh, part of the EPON team. Um, and so the, the aim uh, for today's talk uh, is uh, firstly to introduce myself and then uh, to uh, make an overview so on some of my research interests, which are, um, let's say, in the interface between modeling and uh, healthcare. So I was planned to provide a brief uh, overview on my past experience, but you already did it uh, perfectly, so I can skip maybe uh, this uh, slide. Um, and directly go uh, on uh, the motivation, which uh, I just saw from uh, the title of of the talk uh, turns around to uh, questions, two key questions, which are uh, why and, and how. So I can maybe start from uh, a very general statement uh, to which um, I hope you will, uh, you can hold, all agree with that. And the statement says that cooperation between agents uh, is based on trust. Um, so let's transpose that uh, uh, on healthcare, uh, where we are uh, uh, we are frequently uh, led to face uh, uh, high risk applications. We can, uh, for instance, range uh, uh, from uh, automated uh, data analysis uh, uh, for diagnosis, for example, or uh, modeling and prediction to further time points, or uh, also uh, personalization uh, of treatment and prescription. Uh, so in this context, uh, we have we can have uh, we can consider two uh, basically two uh, two agents which are from one side uh, the system which is made of uh, uh, consists of on the model part and the algorithmic part part and uh, uh, typically is developed uh, by uh, a researcher to address some specific uh, uh, question uh, research question and from the other side. Uh, we have uh, the users, which can be, for instance, uh, physicians, uh, clinicians, or even patients. And uh, they are the one which at some point has to take actions and make decisions uh, based the don uh, so on, the, uh, on the system uh, output. Um, and so uh, this, uh, this, these agents should be able uh, to, to, this is to, to work, this, uh, this, this cooperation between uh, system and users, uh, the agents should be able to communicate uh, trustfully. Uh, so there are in particular two words that I think uh, we all hear more and more recently, uh, which are interpretability and explainability. So interpretability basically concerns uh, uh, the possibility to uh, clearly uh, associate cause to effects, uh, while explainability refers more on uh, being able to identify which is the role of, of each model uh, parameter. Um, and I think that uh, uh, these two, uh, these two uh, aspects should be uh, carefully taken into account uh, while uh, building and uh, assessing a model. Um, so, uh, in this, uh, let's say, philosophy, I can uh, talk uh, of an object, which is mechanistic modeling. Um, so, I, I worked uh, quite a bit on mechanistic modeling, in particular, uh, during uh, my postdoc in the system team in Bordeaux, uh, where uh, uh, I, I was... Uh, I was working on uh, uh, the Ibovac project, which is, an, which is uh, an European project whose aim was the development uh, of uh, a, vaccination, a vaccination strategies against the Ebola virus, so produced uh, by Janssen. And uh, so in this context, uh, based on the, the analysis, uh, in particular of, of the antibody response, um, so the, the, the data which we, we get from, uh, from the trials, um, we wanted to be able to develop uh, um, a biologically relevant uh, model uh, which will allow us to answer questions such as uh, which is the variability, uh, can, can we explain the observed variability in the antibody response, or even uh, uh, can we predict uh, uh, the response to, uh, to a further uh, vaccination, for instance, of the memory response, what can we say about that? And uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, mechanistic modeling uh, um, 
it coupled, coupled with the uh, mixed effects model is a, a very uh, interesting tool to answer such question because uh, um, it, it is able from one side to integrate very naturally uh, our biological knowledge, uh, uh, we, uh, biological knowledge on, on the on the on the mechanism we are considering, uh, specifically here the antibody production, and also uh, through the statistical model we can also uh, take into account the between subjects variability, either explained so through explanatory variables or uh, uh, not explained with the random effects. And for instance, uh, uh, using these methods, we were able to uh, identify and quantify the effects uh, of uh, the vaccination regimen or also the geographical uh, provenance of, um, of the uh, participant in, in, the, in the clinical trials. And also, for instance, to uh, go further, and uh, we, we, we proposed uh, some more complex model to understand and predict uh, the anamnestic response, which is the memory response after um, uh, further stimulation, uh, for instance, by another uh, vaccination uh, doses. Um, and I would like also to take a step further from that, uh, since um, standard mechanistic models are not yet adapted to uh, analyze uh, um, high dimensional data. Uh, so one of, of uh, uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm going to explore uh, is how to uh, integrate, uh, transpose um, the mechanistic uh, models and the mixed effect models uh, into latent uh, uh, trajectories. And um, so we, with Marco Lorenzi, which already work uh, with neural ODA, we are uh, uh, we wanted to explore uh, further this topic and we are currently uh, looking for an intern for that. Um, okay, now um, let's talk about uh, another, another uh, very relevant question um, in uh, biomedical uh, uh, research, which is tightly related uh, to data, which are uh, by their nature heterogeneous and, uh, and can contain, uh, uh, can, can be affected by, by missingness, and all of that uh, is uh, um, exacerbated in a federated context, uh, um, of course. Um, so I started working on federated learning when I first joined uh, the APM team in the context of the INR project Fed by Human, led by Marco Lorenzi. And uh, uh, here, uh, I, I was mainly interested uh, to uh, address the problem of the data heterogeneity of the multimodality as well. Um, and for this, uh, so federated learning um, implies the fact that uh, uh, we are considering decentralized, uh, uh, decentralized centers, which are uh, data providers, let's say. Uh, and we want to be able to train a, a common model across all these centers. And the, 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 final, uh, scope is to, the, the, the final scope is to have something which is more uh, robust and generalizable, uh, since it contains basic information uh, uh, gathered from, from all the participating centers. So um, in this context, uh, what, what I, uh, I I, I was interested to was the, the, the development of a Bayesian framework, uh, which will be able to integrate multimodal heterogeneous data, uh, understand also uh, their, uh, their their variability in the, in the different sources of variability, and uh, um, and also uh, um, include the possibility of some missing modalities and in different centers. So we came up uh, uh, with, uh, um, with a model which is based on probabilistic PCA for multimodal data, where the main hypothesis is the fact that we suppose the existence of global parameters which are able to describe the whole, uh, the whole data. Uh, local parameters in, in each center are then sampled from these global parameters and in turn uh, allowed to, uh, to generate uh, the, uh, the local data. We all, Sorry, we also show uh, in this context that um, 
the we were uh, that a uh, differential privacy mechanism uh, could be added uh, in a very natural way um, and to improve uh, the, the data privacy, which is one of the major concerns addressed through federated learning. And we apply this method to a um, multimodal, uh, multimodal clinical uh, data set in, the, in the imaging data from the Alzheimer's, um, from, on, on the Alzheimer's uh, disease. And uh, one uh, of uh, the, another uh, important uh, uh, point to underline here is that uh, at the very end of the training, uh, each center is, uh, is uh, provided with the final um, federated model. Uh, and uh, if uh, it uh, has missing uh, modalities uh, in its data, in its local data set, it will be able to, uh, to generate them thanks to, um, to the federated model. And uh, uh, more recently, uh, I'm uh, still uh, in this uh, idea of handling the missingness uh, in a federated context. Uh, um, I am now working uh, uh, on a, a more um, general uh, uh, missingness uh, scenarios, which is uh, uh, missing at random data. And uh, with that, in this project, I'm working with, the Mas with some people from the Masai team, Per Alexander Matei and Odspotis. Uh, in particular, and with Marco Lorenz and Fed Vayomed. Uh -huh. uh, and the, the idea is, is here is to, uh, to uh, we, we claim here that uh, to perform the, sorry, to perform uh, um, the uh, imputation step in a federated way uh, is, all, uh, is also uh, beneficial in terms of robustness and generalizability, and the first results are, are very encouraging. Uh, here is very some preliminary results uh, still on the DNA data set. Uh, and I will conclude, yeah, it's time. Uh, yeah, I will conclude uh, with a very quick uh, slide on uh, uh, the late, lately started projects. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, involved in the Simcarutes project, uh, which is an European project led by Maxime Sarmezan. Uh, whose, obje uh, whose objective is the acceleration uh, of the adoption of uh, computer modeling simulation, um, in particular for cardiac applications. And in this context, uh, with uh, Safa Ali, which is a new postdoc who recently uh, joined the team, uh, we are uh, started to um, exploring causal data analysis methods for uh, in silico generated data. Um, and also, um, I am uh, interested in another, uh, in another, in exploring another question, which is uh, the meta modeling. So basically, um, this time the question is what 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 is we federate? We have to federate models instead of data. And uh, here uh, we are very very recently started uh, a collaboration uh, uh, with uh, Excure. Uh, and uh, Maxime Sarmezon uh, through um, an industrial PhD, uh, the PhD of Erwan uh, Gaimar, which started uh, last week, <laughs> so very, very new. Um, okay, I think that I am quite well on time, and uh, that's all for me. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, 